Um, well, I mean, it was all just so sudden. It was unique because not only was I laying everybody off, but I was also getting laid off. So <laughs> it was just craziness. Like I agreed with it on one hand for the safety of it, but the actual doing of it was heartbreaking. I was really sad. I was sad that I couldn't work for like two and a half months. At that time, unemployment laws hadn't really been changed, so I had a couple kids that worked really hard but didn't qualify for unemployment because of like less hours, and one of them ended up couldn't, like lost his home and had to move back with his parents. I also had moved into a new uh, apartment too when that happened, so I was sad to leave my neighbors and then saw my mom and dad a lot. You had such, such problems with the unemployment that a lot of my employees hadn't even been getting paid. And we're talking about a single mother, you know, people living paycheck to paycheck. Huge relief. We could bring people back. Like I had people that drive my trucks, like hanging ladies' clothing, and we were taping all of the floors and measuring everything. And we had the freedom to do that at full-time pay, but they, we only had to work like three-hour shifts to keep it staggered. So it was nice. It just felt like uh, we were cared about. I was excited because it's exciting to uh, support people with special needs and stuff. It's a great environment to work at. Because I love working with my coworkers because they're all nice and really friendly and stuff. And so really, it's all just about falling back on the mission. Remembering what you do, why you do it, and just really trying to engage in it. Wow, what a year it's been. I'm Cassie Kane, President of the Board of Directors for the Ark of Spokane. And I'm Seema Thorpe, the Executive Director of the Ark, and we will be your hosts this afternoon. Thank you all for virtually joining us today. Like many of you, we're hoping this is the last virtual event we will have, and we have a great deal of hope for the future. Throughout the program, we'll be showing several videos that showcase different areas of the Ark and how they've adapted in the past year. I want to thank and acknowledge the people we serve, their families and guardians, our board members and community partners for their unwavering dedication to everyone at the Ark of Spokane, even through these unprecedented times. I also wish to give a shout out to our stellar employees for their patience, creativity, and extreme hard work to ensure that people with disabilities are protected and supported during the COVID-19 crisis. They have given me unending hope and gratitude. Thank you, Cassie. It has been a roller coaster for the past 15 months. And uh, last March, you'll recall, we laid off 53 employees. We moved 45 more to remote work and closed the thrift store, the community center, the Avista site, and our transition and young adult programs. We were struggling to find enough PPE uh, to protect our staff and clients. And now just 15 months later, all but nine employees have returned to work and the thrift store has reopened and is showing record profits. The community center and transition and young adult program clients are being served through Zoom classes and respite care is being offered again. The Avista site is reopened and all staff ha have returned. And so how do we make this amazing recovery? Adaptation and resilience. We applied for and were granted 1.8 million in PPP loans, federal loans, which allowed us to bring our staff back and bridge the deficits that we had. Our um, protective uh, equipment campaign throughout the community brought in enough PPE to support our staff and clients, and local foundations really stepped up, like Avista and Inovia awarded us COVID relief grants to keep us going. Spokane County and DSHS provided funding to retain employees and continue activities in our program. And Supported Living also received critical additional funding to assure that our home sites had the resources necessary, such as the ability to pay overtime, very important. And our wonderful community partner, Giza Credit Union. Thank you, Giza. You've stood by us and you've supported our efforts in every way. Many of our employees are still working remotely and our supported living staff have endured 
more than 185 days of quarantine. The staff have demonstrated a level of resiliency and dedication that inspires me every day. I know none of us would ever want to relive this past 15 months, but I cannot imagine a group of people I'd rather weather this storm with, and we are stronger than we've ever been. So let's take a look at this video now, which shows the incredible impact that the pandemic had on our community center and the resilience our staff has shown in keeping our programs running. I think it was really hard on us down there because we've been working so long trying to just get fully staffed and get a great team in there. And, and we really just finally hit that great team, drivers we needed, and then boom, here comes the pandemic. Well, we were shut down for several months. We didn't open back up until um, July, I think it was. I started to do small group respites. But what we were noticing is I was getting a lot of phone calls, um, a lot of loneliness. People were very lonely. December, November, I was told I get to come back in and help Christy with respite. And she had made enough money to be able to bring a staff back. So that was really awesome. And I've been back since then. We got a grant from Anovia. And so we were able to um, host Zoom classes for everybody. It was so hard the first few Zooms that I did. I honestly had to turn my camera off and mute myself. I cried. You know, they were lonely, they were sad. And then you'd look at this look on their face and they get so excited. And they were realizing that they weren't the only ones alone, that they were alone, but they're well, alone with their friends now. So it was a great way for them to reach out. If, if I don't start the Zoom class <laughs> the five minutes before, like usual, you know, one of the members, he always calls. What's going on? I reached out to the owner of Pike Place Market and he was able to do a, a tour with us, a live tour. It was so fantastic. Gotten to know them more personally and they've joined me in my, in my pregnancy journey. <laughs> We've done virtual tours, bingo. Um, our yoga instructor has still um, volunteered once a week on Wednesdays. It's one stop versus trying to go 25 places in one week to see all their friends. So I think it plays a huge role as far as in their social life. We're, we're making a calendar again. We're starting up outings and it's just a glimpse of normalcy and it feels really good to be heading that way. This has become like, it's not just my job. It's a part of my life, hugely a part of my life. I love this job. I, I, I could not imagine myself doing anything else. Like I said, I mean, I really look forward to every day when I wake up. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to go to work or it's Monday. I never feel like that. As you saw in the video, our staff is made up of amazing heroes. And now we'd like to take the next few moments to honor and introduce some heroes in our community, the Arc of Spokane's 2021 Community Award recipients. These awards recognize the people and organizations who deserve recognition for their support of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So I feel like we might need a little bit of a drum roll here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, so first a Catalyst Award for an organization that has helped the grow of the art grow in our ability to serve clients through advocacy and family support. Chelsea Riley and Brittany Bowerly with SOAR Behavioral Services of Spokane have provided support to our mission in a number of areas, including assisting the ARC with delivering informational resources to clients, providing meeting space, offering volunteers, and looking at longer term strategic collaboration. SOAR and especially Chelsea and Brittany are leaders in offering compassionate, trauma-informed and all-around quality behavioral services to families and those with special needs. Thank you, Soar. Next, a Catalyst Award for educators who have gone above and beyond to ensure that students with intellectual and developmental disabilities enjoy a positive and meaningful learning experience. Teacher Allison Griffin and Principal Tricia Camberg with Regal Elementary advocate for their students and ensure that they get the individualized supports they need to succeed. Working collaboratively with their team at Regal, both of these stellar educators are personally invested in their students' success. They problem solve, offer help, welcome all perspectives, and do not shy away from tough conversations. 
The ARC thanks Allison and Tricia for serving their students with intellectual and developmental disabilities with care, dedication, understanding, and a commitment to individual care and instruction. Our final Catalyst Award for today goes to an employer who has made praiseworthy efforts to hire and support a person with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And this one is really amazing. Melissa Dean at McDonald's in Deer Park hired Tyson through the School to Work program when he was just 19 years old. This month, Tyson turned 40. Melissa has always encouraged Tyson to explore new opportunities within the restaurant and supported his ideas when it came to carving out just the right position. Melissa is a big reason that Tyson has been awarded Employee of the Month and Employee of the Year at McDonald's. She has truly inspired him for many, many years, and you're inspirational too. Thank you, Melissa. Next, we want to recognize the ARC of Spokane's Volunteer of the Year. Last spring, when many of the ARC's programs had to close their doors to in-person services, we had volunteers step up and offer to help in any way they could. Olivia Grubb, a rising senior at Gonzaga University, was there at the beginning of the pandemic, pandemic leading the charge. When the community center began offering Zoom activities, Olivia dedicated her time and efforts to ensuring the activities she led were of the highest quality of engagement possible. Olivia interacts amazingly with all the community center members and has had a great impact on their lives through the pandemic. She fostered community when so many members were living in isolation. She pulled together multiple Zoom activities several times a week to host on her own. Her time and dedication to the ARCS clients made all the difference at a time when the community center was short-staffed, and we will be forever grateful for the role she has played in the last 15 months. Congratulations, Olivia. Huge congrats. Our final community award is the ARCS Legacy Award, dedicated to those people who have invested a great deal of their life and heart to ensuring people with IDD have a voice, are given the opportunity to be included, and are treated with compassion and dignity. This year we suffered a loss. Uh, many people felt a great sense of that loss, and one of the deepest losses for the ARC was the passing of Margaret Gator. Margaret was an amazing woman who dedicated her life to working with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I, I first met Margaret at Centerpoint when she was the director there, and then the Arc of, at the Arc of Spokane uh, for a total of 35 plus years of dedication to the field. The last five years were dedicated to our community center, and she spent her days going out of her way to make sure that each member felt important spending time reading a book or doing a special craft with them. Margaret was truly one of a kind and her passing will be felt deeply by all who knew her. Her life is an inspiration to all of us at the ARC as we consider how to advocate for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and we're honored to recognize her legacy. We know the pandemic has taken a toll on many people, but at the ARC specifically, Supported Living has faced a lot of challenges. Throughout the past year, they have experienced a shortage of staff, of personal protection equipment, and experienced many delay days in quarantines. However, throughout all these challenges, our staff's highest priority has been the well-being of our clients, and that labor of love is reflected in this next video. My name is Annette French and I'm a client of the ARC. Our clients, unfortunately, were kind of like stuck at home, you know, for a long time. So that was really difficult. It was extremely hard not being able to see him or go on dates. The ARC tries to make it as best as they possibly can for you, but they, they do understand that sometimes you get to the point where 
you just can't take it anymore. And I like that they're able to help you through that. It took a toll on everybody. At one point, we didn't even have like gowns. We used what we could. One example is this trash bag right here. This is a beautiful floral gown that was made by one of our donators. We have learned how to adapt to this change pretty well. I'm just proud of everybody that hung in there and were really supportive to the clients and supportive to each other. Um, all I can say is it will get even better than it is now. And if I can do it, anybody can. Hopefully we're turning the corner now and can start to enjoy things that we miss enjoying from back then, you know? We're so encouraged by the ways our staff and clients have adapted this year, and it wouldn't have been possible without the generous support of our greater community. Last summer, you all stepped up and provided us with almost more PPE than we knew what to do with. The Paycheck Protection Program loans allowed us to retain staff and provide creative, flexible ways to continue services to our clients, even virtually. And when we had to switch our annual fashion show and auction fundraiser, to a virtual one, you all showed up. Even though last year has looked really different, it's amazing to see what a community can do when it's focused on the agency's mission. This next video is just a brief recap of Rock the Runway, which we are all looking forward to hosting in person again this fall at the Historic Flight Foundation on Thursday, September 16th. So again, mark your calendars for Thursday, September 16th. We're looking forward to spreading our wings and rocking a couple of different <laughs> runways. When you hear, we gotta do it virtual, we have to change everything, do it different, a whole different way. You know, that instant moment, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are we gonna do? How is this gonna happen? This is gonna be terrible, you know, it's gonna be online, nobody's gonna watch. When we decided we were going to do it on TV yeah. instead of go to the building, yeah. which one did you think or what did you like? TV. I like to see you. You like to see you on TV? Yeah. Uh, my mom and dad watched with me and I think a lot, bunch of the cashiers at the ARC watched it too. It's a lot weird though hearing my voice on screen than talking in person. Having the models being able to watch themselves was really great. That was one of the aspects that were added um, because it was live. So we got to record it, then they got to watch it. So that was really, really great. Um, can't really do that at a live event. So that was the only event she's done in the last year was literally Rock the One Way. So that was pretty big for us, huh? Yep. It ended up actually being really great and we did have a lot of people tuning in, which was awesome. There were, like I said, there were a few watch parties. So I thought, I, I wasn't really surprised, but I was more like relieved <laughs> and really happy that, okay, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be really awesome. So for her to have that event, and I mean, even though it was different, she still got to participate in something. She still got to get out of the house. She still got to, you know, she watched herself on TV and and it had been a long time since she'd had something to look forward to. So that was really huge. My most proud moment is, of course, we did it, we're done, everyone's happy, this was great. But also just seeing the genuine joy and the genuine like happiness that comes from the models because they're just having so much fun. And that's really where I feel like, yeah, this is, we did it. It has truly been amazing the way the ARC has continued to provide its services and keep up with some traditions, even if we had to do it virtually. I especially want to thank SEMA for guiding the ship this last year and my fellow board members who have come alongside every step of the way to help guide and steer the ARC 
through the many challenges of this last year. Thank you, Cassie. Now, uh, while we would prefer to do this in person, we want to welcome a new member of our Board of Directors, Andrew Brasich. Andrew is the Director of Graduate Accounting at Gonzaga University with a background as a CPA and a professor. He has a passion for serving his community and has served on various nonprofit boards in the past. We're excited to welcome Andrew's finance and accounting expertise to the ARC. And uh, thank you, Andrew. We really need you. And Andrew, we know you've zoomed in on this. So <laughs> hi, welcome. <laughs> We'd also like to convey our gratitude to an outgoing board member, Mrs. Ann Stone. Ann has served on the board of the ARC of Spokane for nearly two decades, and her commitment has truly been amazing, especially if you consider she's attended over 200 meetings during that time. Ann has helped the ARC provide quality services that focus on our clients and residents' safety and personal development. She's helped find and retain many of our current board members in her role as chair of the nominating committee. Ann has been our board historian and guided us through so many challenges. Thank you, Anne, for your incredible dedication to our mission. We can never replace your passion, but we truly appreciate the time you have given to our board and the ARC. So in this next segment, I've been asked to give an annual report in three minutes, <laughs> which is going to be impossible. So I'll just do my best here with some highlights first. Uh, I want to talk about the word blurs. That's really been our, our word this past year, and it's a combination of blessing and curse. Uh, in that with the, with the curse of the pandemic and all of the, the stress and challenges it's brought, uh, some blessings have emerged, and I'll, I'll talk about that um, dichotomy here. So we've had to change with people working remotely, uh, and we also had to acquire the technology to do that. We didn't have the technology or the training to work remotely. So that's something we had to acquire very quickly and get up to speed on with moving so many people out of the ARC to work remotely. Our facilities department has also been uh, heroic. They had to ensure that the Second Avenue offices were safe. Uh, they set up ozonators. <laughs> yes, there's a true, that's true, it's called an ozonator. And it's in reception and they also implemented a rigorous cleaning schedule throughout the building. The skeleton crew here at the office had to learn how to do their jobs uh, wearing masks all day and also uh, with the fear and threat of COVID and they had to be very careful with everything they did. Our director team, uh, they came together, created a COVID task force that has created and guided policy throughout the pandemic. That team of directors uh, has hung in there together uh, we've stuck together, we're stronger than ever, especially with the hire of two dynamic new directors, one in development and one in advocacy and support. Our budget last year was $14 million and that budget was unfortunately a deficit budget that we had to bring. We had uh, about $155,000 uh, that we had to make up and we were fortunate to be able to bridge that with the Paycheck Protection Program uh, funding. Um, that bridge meant we avoided uh, tens of layoffs. You know, at least 50 or 60 people would have had to be laid off if we weren't able to make that up. Moving into June, the last month of this fiscal year, we're currently better than budget. The thrift store closed uh, last spring and now it's emerged emerged stronger than ever. It has three separate months that have made record sales, including last month. As you've already heard, we've hired back the majority of people that were laid off, and we've avoided laying off many more. Uh, those financial supports from our government uh, partners, Spokane County, DSHS, DDA, as well as our local and corporate foundations and private donors, have helped us uh, uh, thrive during the pandemic where we could and also survive during the pandemic when we needed to. We've not closed any programs, also a minor miracle, but some have suffered greatly. Supported Living continues to support residents in 17 homes 
But after hundreds of days of quarantine, you can imagine the toll that that's taken. And so we've experienced a crisis there in hiring and retention of our direct support professional staff. And that crisis is still ongoing today into our next fiscal year. We were able to raise wages for our supported living direct support professionals three times during the months of the pandemic, but that's still not enough. We need to raise them again and we will. And we need your help, all of you out there in the community in getting the word out that we're hiring. There's even a $1,000 bonus there for people that we hire in uh, the supported living program. But for those of you that are out there in the audience, that is one way that you can help the ARC is sending excellent caregivers our way. Our community center also experienced the blurs. First is closure and staff layoffs, which made a huge impact on the members of the community center, hundreds of members. Then slowly reopening uh, in the past six months or so with small groups for respite. And now we're laying plans to open our doors more fully as soon as the state allows. That said, the center needs nearly $30,000 to cover those reopening restart costs. So we're gonna be appealing to those community of supporters again to help us with that effort. I hope I was able to do that in three minutes. You did great. <laughs> well, for now, that's our show. It's a wrap, as they say. Um, thank you for attending our annual meeting, and thank you for your support and dedication to the Arc of Spokane. We've un faced unprecedented challenges this year, but those challenges have been met head on, and it gives me incredible hope for the future of the Arc. We'll never be the same, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need to be. Uh, we're going to be okay with the changes. We cannot wait to safely get back to all the services we had before COVID, but we also know that we will do so with renewed energy and a knowledge that we survived, we thrived, and we will be here through any challenges yet to come. We've been around for 71 years. Wow. What pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be here for 70 more, I'm sure. We owe all of that to our amazing community, all of you. Thank you and have a great afternoon.